G'day ladies and gents, Cubic Mini here, my next video about synchronous drop on autocrafters. To begin with, I am excited to present this universal 2x2 crafter I have below me. It can do 18,000 operations per hour, which obviously scales depending on the crafting yields. So for example, crafting stone bricks, which yield 4 items per operation, this will go up to 72,000 items per hour. These rates are made possible using hopper minecarts aligned to the bottom of the crafting table. The remaining five sides each have a dropper pointing into them, and that way we have enough slots for two ingredients, a dummy item, and two more ingredients. So therefore we can do two by two recipes in here. Unfortunately, there's no capacity for this particular setup to have additional dummy items in any of the other slots. However, this is acceptable for about 99% of crafting recipes. In order to be able to handle any recipe from 1 to 4 items per crafting operation, I'm using these 4 times shulker box loaders that I designed, and 2 of them stacked next to each other. So it uses movable tile entities, like so. That way we can have four hoppers pulling from a hopper cart, which is aligned such that it pulls from the hopper carts underneath our crafting table. And these hopper carts just above the loaders, they are aligned such as they intersect into the hitbox of the pistons. Therefore, we are able to use the sticky pistons to push the hoppers down and break the boxes once they're full. Something I should definitely mention about this design is that it's highly directional. It's also very dependent on the way in which you place these hopper carts. I will start with the directionality. We actually use directional update order in order to control which item is sent to which slot of the crafting table. So by only sending a single item type to each one of these dropper lines, we can precisely control where that item goes in the recipe. Dummy items are input from the west side. Then for the 2x2 two two crafting recipe, the first slot starts from the north side. Then the upward side. Then the south side. And the final slot in the 4x4 four four crafting recipe is sent from the east side. As for these hopper carts, the oldest cart gets first pick of what items to remove from our crafting table. So every time these droppers fire, they will fill five slots. So we'll have a dummy item in this slot here, and that item needs to be removed before we can get our items out. Now the way this is done is we have a filter cart here full of tropical fish and it was placed first. So this hopper cart gets priority. It searches first through the cracking table looking for items it can collect. Once it finds the dummy item it will pull it out and in the same game tick these two carts will then be scheduled to pull out the remaining items. However, if there is a valid recipe in this slot, they will prefer this slot and then pull out your crafted items. The hopper cart preference is also really useful for balancing the capacity of the shulker box loaders. Because you can imagine if you're handling recipes that go from 1 to 4 items per operation, designing a shulker box loader for any one of those cases can result in partially filled boxes. And this system waits until the box is full before ejecting it. Introducing a system to eject partially filled boxes adds complexity. So to solve that issue, what happens is, one of these carts will get preference, so if you're only crafting one item per operation, that item will continuously be pulled out 
preferential to one side, which will go to one of the shock box loaders. So something very interesting happens for the special case of wood. So wood is crafted from logs. So four logs makes three wood. So you can imagine an imbalance like this in the input and output would be a disaster for most shocker box loaders that rely on completely filled boxes. However, with the system I have here with the pre preferential order in which hopper carts pull out the items, what will happen is two items each operation will go to one of the shocker box loaders. So it operates at full capacity. An additional one item per operation will then go to the other shocker box loader, and therefore it will operate at half capacity. And the amount of items is perfectly balanced between the two. So what will happen is this loader will eject twice, and at the very end of the craft crafting operation, this will eject once. So if I tick walk this quickly. This side ejected once. And now what we, we should see is they should both eject at approximately the same time at the very end of the crafting operation. There we go. Crafting is now done. Here we have it. Three perfectly filled boxes of oak wood. You may have also noticed some other example recipes I had. You can craft things like books. You can also craft things that require a specific order, such as coarse dirt. Of course, stone bricks is an obvious choice. I just showed you crafting oak wood. Another really interesting case you could use this for is crafting firework stars. I actually experimented with mixing up the, um, the items and the dyes in order to get a little bit of variation with the firework stars. However, the issue with this is that the current shocker box loaders cannot handle mixed items. So what you get is a sort of random spread of firework stars at the output, and they won't load into the shocker boxes properly. So likely I will investigate making a mixed loader system specifically for this application. Another really interesting thing is you can craft pumpkin pie. So I'll just show you that quickly. We need four times as many egg boxes because we only stack to 16. Put in our pumpkin sugar, our eggs. So turn on. Now we're doing one item per operation. Client side, you can't actually see what's happening because we're both putting the filling the slots and emptying out the crafted items in the same game tick using the hopper carts. So it may look like nothing's going on here, but if I select this hopper cart here, you can see that we're crafting pumpkin pies. There we have it. Pumpkin pies fresh out of the auto crafter. So if you have a good source of pumpkins and sugar, and also eggs, craftable foods such as pumpkin pie could maybe be a viable food option. You might be wondering how exactly do we use synchronous dropper systems 
to do our 2x2 recipes here. Well, droppers have a significant advantage over hoppers in that it's very easy to control when they send items. If you activate multiple droppers at the same time, they will actually insert the items in a specific order based upon the subtick game order. So what is this subtick order that I speak of? Well, in order for Minecraft to function, it runs in a game loop. So every single game tick, it adds up every event that occurs and executes them. Now what this means for redstone components is that depending on the configuration of the setup, different components will be scheduled at different times in the same game tick. So what I have here is five droppers pointing into a single crafting table. They all get powered in the same game tick. However, in order to separate them, the game has a few biases towards specific configurations. For example, this dropper at the top, which gets directly powered by the observer, the game picks that as the first to fire. And so a positive Y sends an item to the first slot here. These four droppers on the outside, however, they are powered by causal connectivity. So they require an update from an adjacent block, which is provided by these rails. And so they get scheduled after our block that gets directly powered. However, there are still four droppers being powered in the same phase of the game tick. And so the game needs to separate them further. Now the way it does this is it looks at the direction that the dropper is facing. The order in which directions are processed is negative x, positive x, negative z, positive z. And we can quickly verify this by looking into our crafting table. So using subtick order, we can actually control the order in which items are sent to our crafting table. Now this is perfect for crafting systems where recipes are very sensitive to the order in which items are sent. And so this is what we use for our synchronous dropper order crafting systems. The site I should definitely touch on here is that Making slight alterations to the configuration of your synchronous dropper order crafter can produce drastically different results in the order in which items are sent. So here I simply move the rail from the top of the droppers in our z-axis to next to them. And understanding the change that this makes, I'd like to give a big thanks to VK Tech who um explains this really well in his video on update order. A dropper at the top still gets powered first because it's directly powered by the observer. However, we've got two rails here, one in the negative x direction, one in the positive x direction. The negative x direction is preferred and so it powers first. However, there is a rail next to it. And so it will suspend its update and power this rail. Once it's realized that there's no more rails to be powered, the updates will then propagate back through the rail network. So we've got this rail here that's adjacent to two droppers which are being powered by quasi-connectivity. So they get powered in the same phase. The game differentiates them based on the direction that they're facing. So once again, our negative x is preferred. But now and negative Z is the next to fire. So I can quickly verify this. Our positive Y is the first to go, then our negative X. However, where previously the positive X had fired, we now have the negative Z filling this slot. So you can imagine if you had a recipe which was strongly reliant on the order of this system, and you made a simple change just going from rail on top of your dropper to next to it. Your dummy item has moved from here all the way to down here. And now your 2x2 crafter doesn't work anymore. 
So you need to be very careful that if you change the configuration of your synchronous dropper autocrafter, that you check to make sure that you know which slot each dropper corresponds to. So you can send the correct items to where they need to be. That's a fun activity now. What I'd like to do is use our knowledge of update order to see if we can predict the order of this setup. This is actually the dropper line setup that I have inside of the heart of this 2x2 crafter. And the reason that it's so much larger than it may need to be is because there needs to be space to route all the hoppers to these droppers in order to feed them all at two times hopper speed. So to begin with, we need to find our first block that gets powered, which is right here. We have two rails being, rails being powered at the same time. The direction that the game will prefer first is the negative x. So this, we follow this line here. Now we've got these two rails being powered at the same time. So which way are they facing relative to our powered block? We've got a positive z here and a positive x here. The game will prefer our positive x over our positive z. Therefore, Here fires first, it's pointing into this dropper here, it also gets powered. And so, this will be our first dropper line to get powered, and so we will label this as our first slot. So if we go back to here, we also have a positive Z direction which gets powered. And it will power this dropper here. Adjacent to this dropper is the one below it, which is a negative y direction. It's also got a dropper in the middle here, which is in, a, in our positive x direction. So what is preferred over positive x and negative y? Our positive x actually fires first. And so... This one here in the middle, this one, is our second slot. And then, our negative Y fires, so this becomes our third slot. So now let's go back to the original block being powered here. We will now follow our positive Z direction. We've got two directions being fired here. We've got a negative Z and a negative X. Of course, the game will prefer the negative X first. Therefore, it propagates down to here. So this side will be our fourth slot. And finally, this line here will be our fifth slot. Now, let's quickly verify this. Here we've got our negative Z, so our dropper line facing in the negative Z direction is the first to fire. Then we've got our positive Y, which is our second slot right here in the top. Our negative X, which is right here, our third slot. A positive Z, positive Z direction, here it is. And finally our last slot, positive X, right here. Thank you very much for watching. This has been a video introducing some more advanced concepts behind synchronous dropper autocrafters. I will be making some more videos regarding these systems which can do various other recipes. I'll also be doing some videos introducing concepts behind cyclical autocrafting systems such as the universal autocrafter that we use on the Scarbook server. So if you want to be notified of when I release these videos, feel free to subscribe and I will see you then. Goodbye for now.